interesting findings on Mars. Right. When I saw that first, I thought that's not real. That that's not Mars. That's Earth. I've seen things like that many places on planet Earth, and anybody that ever looks down at their feet as well as looking up into the sky has probably seen features like that. If you're walking along a you know a, a riverbed or any exposed rock, or and you've probably seen something very like that. And yet, it's not. It's Mars. Now, we've heard an awful lot recently about uh, the helicopter, Perseverance, all that. This actually goes back to the Curiosity, which has been in the Gale Crater uh, since 2012. And it has been trundling along uh, with a few hiccups along the way, uh, sustaining a bit of uh, wear and tear. But uh, it has explored lots of areas in the crater and is now uh, exploring the, the lower slopes of Mount Sharp on the rim of the crater. And it's transitioning, therefore, from lower areas where there are lots of clay-based minerals. And clay basically implies, again, uh, the existence of water in the past. It's materials that are laid down by uh, the presence of water. Transitioning from that region up into higher regions where there's more uh, sulfate-based materials. So transition regions are always uh, very interesting. But this one in particular, when you look at it, you don't really have to be a geologist to look at that and say that was laid down by water, either flowing water or relatively shallow water. It's not the sort of uh, feature you, you get where there's big waves pounding on a rocky shoreline. So relatively shallow water, either a pond or a, a riverbed at some time in the past. Now, we know that, unfortunately, there's nothing like that on, the, on Mars at the present, but it shows that there has been something there in the past. We've seen all sorts of evidence of uh, ice below the surface of Mars and either sublimating or melting and causing various features, uh, particularly on the rims of craters and so on, and other activity in high polar latitudes. But here we are in Gale Crater, and that is definitely evidence of uh, significant amounts of water in the past. <clears throat> and we hardly need to repeat again that where there's water and the presence of various minerals, there is certainly the possibility of life. So it's good to see that even Curiosity, still going strong uh, after uh, a decade, basically, is still producing these amazing results. Uh, and it's showing you that we needed confirmation yet again that uh, it's witnessing the uh, evidence of a much different, much wetter uh, Mars in the distant past. We don't know just how far back this this uh, material was laid down in in terms of the liquid water in the area, but it's it's a different Mars that was there in the past, uh, a transition period. And it's going to be absolutely fascinating whenever we can study some of the rocks like that and the ones that we hope will be brought back uh, from the, uh, the ExoMars mission uh, in the future when we can study them on Earth. Distinct possibility of finding some fossil type material on that. I'm sure you're just as excited, Nick. I, I am. The thing is, it's boots on the ground again. It's this argument, and going back to you know Professor Sir Martin Rees, for example, the Astronomer Royal, and his debate of you know where we talked about this in the past, where you know people are saying should we be just using robots? No, you know if we had a geologist there right now looking at that, could you imagine what we could get from that? So the the notion of putting people on Mars and SpaceX is saying that you know potentially within the next next one or two launch windows they're aiming to put people into at least Mars orbit. Now putting people on the ground there's still this huge argument of getting scientists on the ground before we start putting you know commercial tourists etc. It has to happen. If you, you know and it's a good point at ground based space. What if human life started on Mars? This is the thing mm. is that you know we've got so much evidence now from organics in meteorites and i've got meteorites behind me in the cabinets you know some martian meteorites nwa869 which is kind of the same type as the allen hills 84001 which shows evidence of percolated water having gone through it we know that there was water on mars we know that there's sporadic methane we still don't know if it's abiotic or, bio or biological methane we you know all these unanswered questions and you know Going back to the China thing, China has said again they aim to be the first to bring back samples. Now they're they're on a real space race against the United States, and it, it's a great thing because obviously what we saw with Apollo, with so the old form of Soviet Union and the United States, is innovation being driven forward at a rapid pace because of national pride and geopolitics. Now, if China is saying that they want to get to Mars first, 
you know, they've had a very successful first attempt at Mars, putting it mildly, you know, having both an orbiter and a lander and a rover on, on the Martian surface in one hit is, is spectacular for anyone, by anyone's standards. You know, Europe have been trying to do this for 50 years and haven't got anywhere. Same with Russia. So trying to hit it first time and obviously the work they've done on the moon as well, we've talked about many times. Um, I think, though, boots on the ground is the key one here. We can send as many robots as we want and we could drill in and we could you know, potentially bring back samples. But, you know, as you know, Terry, it's like the, the analogy of if you put somebody on the Earth in the middle of the Atacama Desert and said, mm. right, is there any life? You know, if an alien species landed in the middle of the Atacama Desert and they had half an hour on, you know, in the middle of the Paranel region and they, is there any life? Well, no, they'd probably think it was barren and dry and dead. So it's that ability to truly explore and you only have to go back to apollo 17 we just talked about you know jack schmidt and you know gene cern and wandering around on the lunar surface for three days and discovering incredible things because they had a geologist there you know gene cern and saying oh it's orange soil and jack schmidt saying well wait until i have a look at it because i'm the geologist oh yeah heck so this is the thing we need to get boots on the ground and this is my furious argument with professor sir martin reese and huge respect to him as an astronomer but sorry step away from the space science um and in particular you know this the key thing as well with the the advent of more and more commercial space activities if we start just focusing on the commercialization of mars and sending tourists to mars and all of these things that spacex are uh, are contemplating we're never going to find out if that you know the if human life is ground-based space is put in the chat if human life started on mars we don't know we will never know because we'll have contaminated it so much that there will never be a way to absolutely 100% say, oh, yeah, there was life on, on Mars before we got there. You've got to send, you know, properly trained scientists, you know, properly protected robots, etc., not contaminate the planet with hundreds of people. Just, you know, do it in small steps like we do with, you know, the Antarctic research stations, these, you know, in, in the modern era. You know, send proper scientists there first. 